NASA may have found a way to bring water back to Mars. NASA's scientists think it's possible to restore Mars' oceans by creating an artificial magnetic field that sits in front of the planet. Scientists say it is possible to place an inflatable structure that generates a magnetic dipole field at the Mars L1 Lagrange point. This would form an artificial magnetic shield to protect the planet from solar wind and radiation. Under this protection, the Martian atmosphere could become thick enough to melt carbon dioxide ice at the northern pole. In time, the atmosphere could spark a greenhouse gas effect that could restore some of Mars' oceans. Scientists said if the Martian atmosphere could be greatly enhanced over the next few decades, it would help pave the way for colonization on Mars. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Fancy what living on Mars would be like? Keep watching. TV show gives a glimpse of life on Mars. The first home designed for humans to live in on Mars will be unveiled at an exhibition in the UK on November 10th. The exhibition of the show home ties in with a National Geographic docudrama that imagines colonists from Earth living on the red planet. The house would be constructed with Martian soil. The soil would be microwaved until it forms a brick. The bricks would be used to build the walls of an igloo-shaped dome, which would be around 10 feet thick. Recycled spacecraft parts, including a double airlocked entrance, would be used as the front door. Experts believe the dome would be able to withstand the Martian environment, including extremely low temperatures, micro-meteorite impacts, a thin atmosphere, and cosmic radiation. An underground area would contain facilities such as a dining hall and laboratory. The colony would expand module by module until it forms a city, termed Olympus Town. The exhibition at the Royal Observatory Greenwich in London coincides with the launch of the six-part docudrama Mars, which tells the story of an attempt to colonize Mars in the year 2033. Nonprofit group plans permanent Mars colony. The race to Mars has begun. SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk says the company will send people to Mars by 2024, and he will reveal plans for colonization in September. Meanwhile, a nonprofit group also aims to establish permanent Mars colonies, sending the first group of astronauts by 2026. After Earth, Mars is the most habitable planet in our solar system. It has similar natural resources, a temperate climate, and an adaptable gravitational pull on its surface. Nonprofit foundation Mars One has developed a plan to colonize Mars. It has already selected six teams of four individuals, and the first team will begin training next year. In 2020, Mars One will launch a communication satellite to the Red Planet. Between 2022 and 2025, a series of rovers will land and assemble livable habitats, which include a life support unit and a communication system. The living unit will house an inflatable living section and an airlock used by astronauts when leaving the sealed, habitable settlement. The unit will include materials for the construction of rooms, floors, and electrical outlets, and comes equipped with showers and kitchen areas. Additional units will arrive and be constructed as new teams join the colony. Attached to the living unit is the environmental control and life support system. The system will feed nitrogen and argon gas extracted from Mars's atmosphere into the habitable space as inert gases. Thin, film solar photovoltaic panels will be included to generate electricity. The life support system will be equipped with heating units to boil and extract water from ice in the planet's soil. Once the astronauts have landed, it will also be in charge of water purification and removal of carbon dioxide from the living unit atmosphere. The colony's communication system will include two orbiting satellites, one around Mars and one around the Sun. The satellite orbiting Mars will only be interrupted when Mars is positioned between it and Earth. To counter the lapse, the second satellite orbiting the Sun will intercept and relay the transmission, allowing almost 24-7 communication with Earth. The colony will lose transmission only when the Sun is between Mars and Earth, and Mars is between its satellite and Earth simultaneously. Mars One will launch a team of four members every two years, starting in 2026. It will take a year after departing Earth for a team to land on the surface of Mars. The organization hopes to train and send new teams, even after the initial six have colonized the planet. Mad scientist Elon Musk wants to nuke Mars. 
Stephen Colbert recently compared Elon Musk to a real-life Tony Stark during an interview in which the entrepreneur set out his vision to make Mars habitable. Now how exactly would this mad scientist make this foreign land habitable? Good old American way. Bombs. Terraforming is the hypothetical process of altering a planet's environment to make it livable. Tesla CEO Elon Musk recently floated the idea that Mars could be terraformed through nuclear strikes to destroy its polar ice caps. The average temperature on Mars is similar to Antarctica in winter. Destroying the poles may warm the planet, but scientists told the Los Angeles Times this may not warm Mars enough and could lead to unknown changes in its terrain. Naturally, Twitter had something to say. User James Royce asked, Can Musk get any cooler? While Jackalope asked, why does Musk want to nuke Mars? Another slower method Musk suggested would be heating the planet through greenhouse gases, but this also faces problems, as Mars' current levels of carbon dioxide are potentially suitable for plants, but poisonous to animals. What do you think of Musk's ideas? Are they science fiction? Or do you think he may actually have a point? Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. NASA team practices living on Mars on Volcano in Hawaii. A group of researchers are living on a volcano in Hawaii to simulate life on Mars as part of a NASA financed study, the Hawaii Space Exploration Analog and Simulation, also known as High Seas. The six people participating in the project started living inside a dome-shaped building on Mauna Loa Volcano last Wednesday and will be there for the next eight months. The dome sits at an altitude of 8,000 feet. The two-story building has a diameter of 36 feet and has about 1,500 square feet of space. Like real astronauts, the crew has to perform scientific work, including wearing spacesuits for excursions outside the dome. To simulate communication between Mars and Earth, crew members only have access to email, and each message is delayed by 20 minutes before being sent. Any reply will also arrive with a 20-minute delay. Years from now, when trained astronauts travel to Mars, they will have to spend about 500 days on the planet. The goal of the High Seas Project is to study how well people can live, work, and get along while isolated from civilization.